Hey guys, this is Kelly, RC Mechanic. Thank you for coming back. Today we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the power steering update in my wife's uh, YJ. And um, I just want to go over it with you. Uh, let you know what we're going to have to do um, to go ahead and swap that. Okay, so there's the gearbox right there. Right up in here. And uh, what we got to do is we need to take this bolt, this bolt, that bolt, and that bolt right there out. Uh, take the steering arm loose from the pitman arm, and this thing should come right out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we're going to go ahead and compare and make sure everything's going to work right. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the difference, and um, some of it will be very obvious. It is well, we got the length right here. See if I can back this up. Whoop, wrong direction. Okay, that's as far as it goes. Uh, the length right from here to here uh, looks to be. I know you can't see it because the line's in the way, but pretty darn close. The other question would be, as you can see, the pitman arm on the manual steering uh, gearbox has a much steeper angle to it and the power steering gearbox is not however the shank coming out of this gearbox is longer than this gearbox so if we go ahead and set this up here kind of like so I may or may not have to change the pitman arm I think what we we'll do is we'll get the We'll get this one here up in there and see where we're at. But before I do that, what I'm going to do just to make things easier, is I'm going to take these lines off so I'm not fighting with them while I'm installing this. All right. All right, guys. We've got the gearbox. Let's see if you can see it there. It's down right there. That better. It is right there. All right. So, <clears throat> ran into a little problem. The shaft that runs from the gearbox right down there up to the steering wheel up here is seized up. See, uh, right there, there's a line as far as how far it used to be able to telescope, right? This is seized up. <clears throat> so, I gotta try to get that freed up before I can <coughs> complete the rest of this but in the meantime what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the pump mounted and uh, the reservoir where I think it should be um, and it looks like either I'm going to have to pull I'll either have to uh, drop the gearbox down again put the lines on or pull the radiator out so because it's in a real tight spot otherwise the gearbox uh, mounted up just fine. The bolts for the old one uh, worked just fine. Um, the only thing was is that the old gearbox was held on with three bolts. This one nut was on the bracket down there, ran through with the bolt. And uh, so let's take a look at what we need to do for the pump. All right, so it's, uh, it's like this Jeep was made to already have power steering. And I'm really surprised it didn't because it has air conditioning, it has power brakes, it just didn't have power steering. So the bracket you see in front of you is very similar to the bracket for the power steering pump. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and take that bracket off, that idler pulley, put the pump on here, uh, get that run, and get the reservoir in place. Uh, if nothing else, if I can't get that uh, shaft to free up, I'll have to get some fire on it. Heat it up, try to get the brake free that way. So let me uh, go ahead and uh, I'm going to rip this here off. Um, it's got like three, three, four bolts and uh, loosen this belt and then it should come off. And a really cool thing is that really should be able to use this same belt for the power steering pump. The power steering pump pulley is a little bit bigger, but there is a lot of room. I don't know if you can see the adjuster there. 
it's sitting at about the center there's a lot of room for that so this should fit just fine okay so uh, what I want you all to keep in mind is that I am working with used parts here so it's gonna have problems sometimes it's not like a brand new one but you know you know even brand new stuff has problems alright so the new problem I found is that there is a bolt missing or actually not missing but broken right there alright so I'm gonna have to get uh, that out and um, the good thing is is that in behind that is uh, it's a steel bracket so most likely uh, it just got rusted up um, it does have some uh, from what I can tell maybe some salt uh, corrosion I mean coming Rhode Island Rhode Island is an island off the ocean so um, and the other thing is is that this uh, bracket for the idler that came off the Jeep I just set it up here I, I wanted to make sure it would come completely apart and it did um, this bracket right here is the same as that one right there so I can reuse that bracket not have to deal with these washers and that hokey bolt that somebody put in we have the original bolt right there and uh, I can basically take this off of here put it on here and it's the same unless I get another surprise all right so that's where we're at on that I still have that shaft soaking and penetrating oil hopefully I don't have to go and heat that up um, but uh, yeah this is the way it goes you know that's mechanics for you all right guys so uh, <clears throat> I found another problem with the radiator here um, which is unrelated to the power steering problem but you see right here there's no nut on this side shield right here basically all the nuts are missing except for a couple all right so what I did is I took this self-locking um, nut right here and I uh, it was the wrong thread so I retapped it to the correct thread pitch and screw that on I think that's going to do pretty good um, what I'll most likely do is take this back off real quick and put some uh, blue Loctite on here so they don't back off because when I went to go and thread it the nylock that was on this nut um, is now destroyed so I'm going to go ahead and do that we're going to end up pulling the radiator out because I want to go and replace all of the missing nuts or anything that might be iffy because you can't have in my opinion a vehicle like this that's super bouncy jumping around with the radiator just rattling around doing whatever it wants to right because you'll end up with a leak and that also you gotta if you ever if you run into this problem yourself make sure do not over tighten these because it's only going into plastic at the top and lower tank okay so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna drain the radiator we're gonna pull this out um, it'll make it easier when I go to hook up the lines anyway I know I toyed with the idea earlier in this video but um, looks like I'm gonna have to do that because of uh, these nuts being missing so <clears throat> all right guys so I was about to put this thing back together and what I found I don't know if I mentioned this before that there's a bolt missing right there that's on the intake side and on these 2.5 liters and 4.0 liters the intake and uh, exhaust is the same gasket so you can imagine there's uh, probably quite a bit of a vacuum leak right there we're gonna have to probably address that later another thing is if I can get down in here that motor mount right there she's done for so we're gonna have to do a motor mount on that <clears throat> I was actually just about to put the bracket on for the power steering and then I noticed that um, other than the radiator needing to be fixed up um, that's uh, about all I found so far so um, <clears throat> so here's the bracket uh, I done went and I uh, I repaired the old one and I'm gonna show that to you alright so on um, this power steering pump there was a stud that was uh, coming out 
this side right here and get in there hopefully you can see that anyway there was a stud right here so I cut this off and this piece right here it's like a big backer washer it was like a um, the stud was pressed into this uh, bracket. I goober welded that up. I know it don't look very good, but it's going to hold. Uh, then I re-threaded the hole so that I could get the bolt just like it was when the tensioner was on it. So I think that'll work out. Um, like I say, I was just about to put that bracket on. I know it said other stuff, so um, guess we'll just move on because I don't have motor mounts and um, I don't have a bolt and I don't have a gasket so let's see if I can at least get her some power steering all right everybody I got the radiator out and uh, if you can take a look at here see how fluid that's coming out it's all brown well we did have some cold days here a little while back I'm hoping that's not just water not only that, but come over here to the pan. Let's see. That does not look good. Okay, so water will get you home, but if you don't put antifreeze back in, that's what you get corrosion. So I'm hoping. At the bottom of this radiator is not all plugged up, but um, that's not what I'm concerned with right now. What I am concerned with right now is uh, take a look at these uh, mounting bolts that hold these side plates on right here. Um, see, there's one here. There was none here. I put this one in. There you go. I put that one in there. And on the other side, there's a zero there and one right up there. All right, so <clears throat> this whole radiator basically been just bouncing around in there. Um, I don't see where the core is damaged really bad. You know, dirt daubers uh, built a nest on each side, but other than that, um, that part's not looking too bad. This radiator actually may not be very old. I am not sure. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I guess I'm going to well I'm going to go ahead I'm going to replace this one. It's loose anyway. And then uh, put uh, this dial on all all four corners. So uh, I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and put those in and uh, we'll move on. Okay, so what I got going on here is uh, this is what you call a tap. And it uh, looks like the size of this one is um, 10 by 32. So this one here is metric. Um, and uh, 10 is the size of the um, bolt, metric 10. And 32 would be 32 threads per, uh, I believe, millimeter. As you can see, if you can see it, it's very fine. Very fine thread there. So, what I do is I just, I had already put a little oil on here. Let's go ahead and start it. Try to get it as straight as you can. When you do that, don't uh, be in a really big hurry when you're going down in because if you go too fast you have just uh, really choppy not clean threads so what I'm doing here is I'm taking this bolt or this nut I'm sorry that is a standard thread probably the But uh, and I'm just kind of I'm just making it into a fine thread. So as you can see, I screwed it down nice and slow. And I'm screwing it back nice and slow. And uh, the one last thing is, is you don't want to drop your taps on the ground, even though they're very hard steel. 
it could damage it. And then you wouldn't have anything that's very good at all. So, all right, so this will be the last nut. I'll save that one to show you all. And uh, you probably cannot see the threads inside. But, there it is. Okay. All right, I'm going to go and throw these on the radiator. Okay, so I got these here um, on, and what I did is I uh, put just a dab of Loctite at each stud. Uh, the one I have a problem with right now is this one right down here. Uh, this one had all actually been um, obviously hammered on quite a bit because it would not lock in the channel where the the stud goes into so that's all the farther I get this one tight but this one up here is completely tight and these up here these are good to go so just gonna go ahead and uh, put some Loctite on uh, these last two right here and uh, yeah we'll just uh, get to this thing reinstalled alright guys so I got the radiator in <clears throat> yeah more problems we got a thermostat housing leaking right down there. There, right somewhere down there. Right there. I've got it my helper. <laughs> All right, that's leaking. Uh, but hey, the radiator don't move no more, so that's good. The power steering is all hooked up. I can't test it because my uh, st steering shaft <coughs> going from the gearbox to the steering wheel is seized up but will not telescope I cannot get it in there I've uh, even taken to using the air hammer on it and uh, to no avail so I'm gonna have to get another one of those but um, as far as that goes uh, the, uh, the the dead Jeep uh, power steering kit um, worked really well um, only issue I had and it had nothing to do with them was uh, get the power steering lines on they were uh, way down there and uh, <clears throat> actually uh, taking this dang shroud off made it so much easier to put that belt on so anyway uh, hopefully this uh, video was helpful to y'all uh, if you've ever uh, done one of these or plan to do one of these um, hopefully uh, you know your Jeep is in much better shape than this one is it's uh it's just the little things guys it's just that it's you know wires dangling um or, you know things were fixed or put back together or done halfway so you know it's not the jeep's fault but hey you know what i don't have a payment so that's good <clears throat> so uh it was supposed to be here a valentine's present didn't work out it's all right we'll have to get more parts it's okay yeah. Still happy. All right. So, if you like what you saw, make sure to give a like, click, comment, and um, keep building, keep fixing. We'll see you later.